<laughs> Hi, I'm Phil from Driftworks. This is my buddy Jay, and this is my E30 M3. And we're here at Advocate Motorsport to give it a quick run on the dyno after fitting the AMPDM dash and the Level Motorsport complete wiring loom. Everything's new, and we just want to make sure it's all right before we head to Retro Rides at Goodwood in a couple of weeks. So this is Tom, the owner. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, your uh, dinosaur is excellent, by the way. This is a great way of doing it. I know it's kind of, you see this a lot on American dinos, don't you really, where you drive onto a four post ramp, but we just changed the lambda sensors in seconds this way, rolled it back on, strapped it up, and uh, yeah, we're just gonna have a look at what it does. It's it gonna works. be pathetic, isn't it, compared to? Well, a real car. Well, your, your, Mustang is always a benchmark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to be fair. My F80 blew the tires off at any opportunity. This is not going to be doing that. And we've got it all strapped down at the back here, nice and safe. <laughs> Quite funny, we finally found a use for the air jacks. This being an X E30 M3 race car, it's got provision for air jacks that we've never used, but yeah, perfect, ready for strapping. <laughs> It doesn't have a lumpy cam in it. <laughs> it's just a bad cold start. <laughs> One of our new lambda sensors just dropped straight out. So, yeah, brilliant. is he working again now? That's right, then. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's very, very rich with the cold start enrichment, so we're just gonna pull a bit of that out now. Right, this is the one having a run. That's pretty good, isn't it? Just being able to get underneath there on a creeper. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're just swapping both lambdas out for some reason. Both brand new lambdas have just dropped out, so very confusing. So I realized while editing this that I haven't actually explained why this car needs remapping or the map checking basically it's never been tuned since it was very first built and mapped by gareth at howell engineering now his first map was always supposed to be just the temporary one and we were supposed to get it done properly we never did um, for various reasons because the car kind of ran perfectly fine and i never felt like i needed to chase horsepower with it but since the addition of the new AMPDM and the posh level motorsports wiring loom the car seemed to be running differently uh, and there is a theory that many of the components are actually getting a much better power supply now than they previously had, uh, which could change the map, which is what made me think maybe I should get this checked out on a dyno properly before just taking it on track and potentially causing some damage. So the car's now seeing its oxygen sensors again, and we can see that it is running super, super rich. It looks to be overfueling on the entire map, so we're just taking out uh, a percentage over the entire map for now.
TPS calibration. Why is that, Jay? Because one side's pulling fuel, the other side's adding fuel. And it's like, I don't know, 10 or 15% difference between the yeah. two. Yeah, so. it's a bit weird. Um, but there's so many things to change in this IVEX. It could be that there's some weird part of the map that's doing something different left and right banks. But we'll start with the TPS and uh, give it another run and see how it goes. Venturi airbox back on and ready to give it another go. Dun, dun, hey, filming for dun. the disappointed face. As long as it's still got an end That's on disgusting. it. Oh yeah, it's properly disgusting. Hmm. That just looks like that hasn't run for a bit. Super, super purely. Yeah. Mmm. Does that run look any better? <laughs> I mean, no. But, yeah, <laughs> we know that came out of a running vehicle, I think. Well, just it came about. Out of this. But, yeah, I can, I've cleaned that one off, but I'll probably give that a scrub and put it back in rather than use that. Yeah. Dish. Talk dish. Talk dish, yes. In. In. On. On. Okay, fire up. Let's see what it does. No, it's still not working. Okay. Let's uh, try to get the call pack, I guess. Yeah. And we actually came prepared with some spares, which is not very like us. Spare plugs, yeah, uh, I, they are a bit lucky. old. <laughs> but, yeah. Got lucky in the car. Okay, same again, fire up. Please work, please work, please work. Right, Jay, you, you work. ready? Disconnected. Okay, are you ready to disconnect? Yeah? I'm ready to snap it off again. <laughs> there you go. Yep. yep. Sweet. Happy days. Back to business. Back to business. So now the car appears to be running quite nicely, but it's definitely down on power. It seems to be making sort of a max of 320 horsepower, which is about 100 horsepower down on what I'd expect. And we know that dynos are different from one dyno to the next, but that's a bit more than we'd expect. Oh, it's been one of those days, isn't it, mate? Nice, easy, just map check. What are we doing right now? We're um, rewiring the cam sensors. <laughs> we, we haven't even told the story. No, we, we haven't. Well, we, it's been, it turned into one of those, oh, I can't even be asked to pick up the camera type moments, didn't it? Where uh, we're just down about 100 horsepower. Yeah, we've been running at 320, 330 horsepower. Yeah. And we turned out we had no VVT control. No yeah. I lost control on a BMW, I suppose it's called. Yeah, we were kind of thinking, well, well it's okay for a dyno to read a bit stingy, but we're like, that's. I th I just thought it's that like a is about of your power. yeah it's about the exact amount you would get if your um, Vanos wasn't working. So we started the procedure of testing Vanos solenoids. I mean, the, none of us are an expert on solenoids. No, uh, that's the problem. It is yeah, so it, you know. Uh, Tom's helping us out as much as he can, but he's not done Cyvex before. Um, but yeah, the pro by the process of elimination, of with some help from uh, Matt at Level Motorsport, um, and and, um, Matt has wired these as per the internet. Um, these cam sensors here, but. Um, 
Carl at Emerald has just saved the day through Craig next door to us, who's um, had an Emerald run in one of these and done loads of work with getting the Vanos working on that with his Emerald ECU. Yeah, he's just um, told us the pins for these, and yeah, we just need to flip flop two of them, two of the three. We just tested one, it's successful. Doing the other three now, and we should hopefully be able to um, get this thing running. Yeah, power number that starts with a four. Well, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Or, you know, even if it was 390, I wouldn't even care, but. No, you know. it's <laughs> yeah. We'll blame Tom's diner and go home. Yeah, yeah, happy days. Or we won't tell anybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. You'll see a number at the end. <laughs> it didn't do a four. Or it blew up. <laughs> if you don't see this video. Yeah, this might be the end of the video. Yeah. <laughs> Got camera all signal. Oh yeah. Ah. Oh. Progress, progress. As you can see, the shutter doors have come down because it's no longer working hours. <laughs> but Tom's hanging around to get this done. Awesome. Day one, wrapping up Jay, and not uh, not in the best way. It's not going to work. <laughs> we'll start day two tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, it's day two, coming soon. <laughs> Right, third day towing, this time with the wife's car, but it's off the dyno, finally. <laughs> um, I was here yesterday uh, to collect it because we thought we'd got to the bottom of the Vanos issue, uh, or the Vanos not working issue. Um, we had done a really silly, so me and Jay, at the end of the day when we were rewiring those cam sensors, we'd done a really dumb and um, put the inlet and the exhaust cam sensor uh, I'll show you. Just basically plugged that one into that one and vice versa. So it took a bit of diagnosing again, um, but yeah, got to the bottom of that. But then um, they got the Vanos working, uh, started doing some mapping and the Vanos was dropping out. Uh, at like 6,000 RPM and it was because it was losing sync on one of the sensors here. Turns out we've got a faulty sensor which we've never had so it must be to do, it must have been caused by either them being wired wrong um, or the process of elimination we used to uh, determine faults so I think we went into a test setting on the Cybex so who knows anyway regardless I didn't collect it yesterday they got a cheap aftermarket cam sensor from uh, like Eurocar parts or something put it in and finished the day strong and I say strong but loosely strong because it only made 370 horsepower now I'm told by Craig who's had uh, an LS car dynoed here that it made a lot less than he would normally expect so maybe it's just a thing. Numbers aren't everything but yeah 370 horsepower should be about 4, 420 minimum really I'd expect it with the mods that it's got, um, Catalyst and the airbox and the fact that we can tune it, uh, you know maybe 430, 440 but ultimately I'm just gonna drive it and see it's as fast as it was before, as quick as it was before. I'm not chasing numbers, it doesn't really matter, but um, it'd be nice to know that it's healthy. Um, worst comes to the worst, I might see whether somebody wants to lend me their E92 you know, M for me, bring it to the dyno and see what it makes on this one. Um, but yeah, so a huge thank you to the guys at uh, Advocult, who are now busy working on the stuff that they should have been working on two days ago. But, <laughs> but yeah, um, absolutely smashed it out. Really, really grateful for the help on this one. And uh, I'm going to drag the E30 home now and probably have a quick send around our industrial estate uh, to see whether it feels like it's got roughly the same sort of power. See you back there in a minute.
enough because that did fail. Uh, not, not as fast. Faster towards the top end now. Like, I don't know, I didn't even pay attention to how high I was revving it then. So I, I'd, I'd almost forgotten. It's been, oh, how long has it been? Oh, Nine months yeah, since I drove yeah. this. But I mean, yeah, last August. Like, the gearing is, is set to Nürburgring spec, so it's so long, the gearing is, it's really difficult to pull away in first, which is my first reminder of you know, the clutch engagement and having to slip this tiny little clutch that much but uh, annoyingly the, that dash turned off because it stalled so I'm not, go, not sure what's going on with the map that's causing it to stall either but I don't know that almost felt fast then when I rang it out and right. I, don't, I don't think I hit the limiter so maybe it's just because the end of um, first gear could be bloody 60 mile an hour in it currently probably is and maybe yeah. I'm not, not ringing its neck enough I mean uh Hey, did, did you notice the display at all? No, I turned it off before I right. stopped because this this um, dash had turned off annoyingly. Yeah. So I'll I'll give it another go. All right. Yeah. Maybe it's not not broken. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the best kind of maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe it's all right. See I'm just about Goodwood. to go on holiday tomorrow as well, and then I'm coming straight back, and we're driving to Goodwood. So hopefully we hopefully, can get this. Uh, hopefully it's good now. Yeah. Yeah. Loop. Not that you can see on this terrible screen. You can see. <laughs> you can see better on the phone than you can in real life. Um, so yeah, just wasn't revving it high enough. Okay. Because it's so long gearing, I, you know, you can't even pay attention to what actual speed you're going. But um, yeah, I just wasn't bringing its neck enough. And it is. It doesn't feel as fast down low. But like I say, nine months ago since I last drove it, maybe it just is like that. I always remember it being a really peaky power band. Um, but I think I'm happy enough to call that certainly fast enough to get around Goodwood with a few laps. That's good news. So yeah, I think we'll, um, we'll probably just say, we've got to put a new gearbox temp sensor in it. Yeah. Just quickly. 
uh, get it back up on the trailer, load it up. I've got to go on holiday for a week for the first time with a three-year-old girl. <laughs> Looking forward Not to that. You're going to go and look after your child in a different country. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're exactly. saying. Exactly. Yeah. And then we'll see you at Goodwood. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you very much, Jay, obviously, for all your help and extra efforts for um, having to catch uh, pubic transport. I don't mind trains. Uncle. I draw the line at buses. <laughs> yeah, that's too much. <laughs> anyway, and also thanks, of course, to Tom at Advocate for fitting us in last minute and um, this turning into a bit more of a saga than it should have been. So, yeah, thanks as always for watching. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for supporting us by buying through the Drift Workshop and uh, yeah we'll catch you next time. Peace.